Okay, so you want to buy organic, but also if you can't afford organic all the time, I understand, you know, buy local as much as possible because in that way you're going to get things that have less pesticide and are grown in season. Um, a lot of pesticides that have been banned in the United States, they sell to other countries, Chile, Peru, other places. So then you get grapes from Chile, you're getting a, a grape that was grown with a banned pesticide. So watch yourself. Next slide, please. This is very important, uh, the role of probiotics in health. Um, some people are unfamiliar with the fact that we have gut flora. Um, gut flora. These are organisms that live in your intestines, and they live synergistically with you. They're beneficial to you. We have a lot of good and bad bacteria. We have staph, and we have strep that live in us. But because of the good bacteria, the bad bacteria aren't allowed to colonize and get out of control. Often when you have an infection, that's exactly what's happened. The bad bacteria have gotten out of control. So it means your body is out of balance. Um, this microbiome is what they call this collection of bacteria that live within you and act as a beneficial bacteria. They're necessary in order to, for you to get the proper nutrients out of your food. You, they live synergistically within you, just like uh, in uh, termites. The termite itself cannot digest wood, but it has an organism that lives in its gut that does digest the wood. So the termite chows down on the wood, and then the organism in its gut takes the nutrients out of the wood, then the termite can live from those nutrients. Well, we've got the same kind of ecosystem going on in our gut. Will you click on that, please? Yeah. All right. So, you see, this is a very interesting article about how you yourself, by what you eat, can change your gut bacteria very quickly. Like within three, four, five days, by eating uh, very heavily dairy and meat, you can produce uh, large colonies of bacteria that researchers now believe are at the base of causing inflammation, obesity, uh, all kinds of other problems. So you really want to eat closer to a plant-based diet. You don't really want to eat at a sitting more than uh, the size of your palm for a piece of beef. And generally, you don't want to eat too much red meat during the week. I would restrict myself to not more than three to four times of red meat uh, per week, but certainly it's up to each individual what's comfortable for them. Uh, you can kill that, and we can go to the next slide, I believe. Let's see. What, well, let's see. Uh, we'll go back one, please. Okay. I regularly take acidophilus to promote the, the support of my gut flora. Um, acidophilus is a beneficial a bacteria. I use the product that's labeled right here, Jarodophilus. It's made by the Jaro company. I particularly like it. Another company is Garden of Life. Another, some people don't like to take supplements, don't believe in supplements, that's fine. You can get your gut bacteria by eating live foods, something like this. Bubby sauerkraut is found in the refrigerator section of the uh, grocery. It does not contain vinegar, so if you're buying uh, sauerkraut that's unrefrigerated and contains um, uh, vinegar, you're not getting a live food. You're not getting an, uh, a food that contains the organisms. Also, of course, everybody knows yogurt. You want a sugar-free, I like uh, the 2% milk or whole milk, Faya Greek yogurt. I, I find that to be particularly helpful. It contains quite a number of, of um, bacteria. They're listed here on the package. Um, you, can, you can come up to the table and, and see it. It looks like this. I don't know if everybody can see that. Um, organic soy, inoculated cheeses like blue cheese and um, brie, stilton, also of course live miso. You don't want to boil your miso. You, you boil the soup first and then you put the miso in. 
Uh, if you do it the other way around, you're killing the live organism and you're not going to get the benefit of it. Okay, next slide please. Okay. Um, we've been talking about inflammation in the body and the uh, Swank diet is very useful as an anti-inflammatory diet. But if you want to learn more about anti-inflammatory diets, this is a wonderful place to go. Will you click there, Barry? Okay, if you'll drop down. You see? Yeah, drop. No, if you drop down, keep drop, keep, okay. yeah. If you if you go see see the view the full yeah okay if you click there you'll get a nice large picture of the uh, of the pyramid mm -hmm. I think you've got it so big Barry that yeah there, there it go. is there you go <clears throat> okay this is a really good way to structure your diet now people who are not sensitive to wheat you want to eat a whole grain right. And you see, this is uh, fish and seafood. You don't really see a lot of uh, red meat up here, do you? No. Okay. But you can have red meat in your diet as long as you eat a clean product and you don't eat too much of it. As you, your mother taught you, everything in moderation. Okay. Uh, if you can kill that, please. Boom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You don't have to click there, Barry, but okay. this is a good general site. This is Dr. Weil, Dr. Andrew Weil. A lot of you may be familiar with him. I don't know. Uh, I think he does a lot of very good work. He's a Harvard-trained uh, medical doctor who studied um, indigenous people of Latin America and their diet and their use of herbs for uh, healing. He also studied very extensively Eastern uh, methods of healing that have been around for thousands of years, such as traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, uh, and things like uh, Ayurveda, which is the traditional uh, more than 5,000 year old uh, medical system of India. Um, he uh, teaches at the uh, University of Arizona Medical School, and he uh, advocates integrative medicine, which is a combination of Eastern and Western medical practices. Western medicine is terrific for you when you have a stroke or you have a heart attack or you're in a terrible car accident, you, wanna, you want your life saved and Western medicine is great for that. Also very complex surgeries. However, if you have a chronic condition, uh, Western medicine is not very good at treating it. It's kind of like killing flies with a mallet. So uh, if, you, if you look around at some of what are called alternative med methods or integrative medicine methods, a lot of uh, what they have to offer is very good for chronic condition. Okay. Next slide, please. Uh, for people who are diabetic, the glycemic index is a lifesaver. This is a table that evaluates how uh, foods uh, cause your blood sugar to react. It's based on, I think, a tablespoon of sugar or a slice of white bread is 100. And every other food is given an evaluation based on that. You can go there if you want, Barry, so people can see what it looks like. This, third, this next site below is, is uh, a book that uh, is called the uh, Low Glycemic Shopper's Guide to GI Values 2014. It's a nice softback book. It's very helpful uh, for when you're shopping. The idea is if you have high blood sugar to, to eat at the value of 55 or lower. So something like a pear has a value of 55. Uh, of course, that's you know not a hard and fast rule, but that's the kind of idea. Uh, this is very helpful. This gives you the whole glycemic index and, and answers any questions you have if you have blood sugar issues. Uh, I don't happen to be diabetic, but I do have high blood sugar. I kind of sit on the line, so I'm very conscious about eating low glycemically. Can you kill it? Thank I can you. kill it. Okay. No, you don't need to click there. Okay. We'll go to the next slide, please. Uh, 